Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Wanted to talk a bit about winter foot traction wear and the various types that are available. And I can just sort of speak from my limited experience on what you might look for uh, depending on the area that you live in and the climate and the amount of snow and ice that you're going to be faced with. Now there's a lot of advantages to winter footwear accessories such as these uh, when talking about preparedness or SHTF. Now for one, if the grid ever were to go down, there would be a lack of snow removal in the urban areas and of course the rural areas, which there already is for the most part. Uh, so simple tasks like walking through the city could be made very complicated without some sort of traction equipment or flotation device like the snowshoes. So something to consider also for security purposes, um, things such as these uh, traction wear, if you have, uh, if you're say being confronted or getting a physical altercation, outside in winter and in I can tell you in 80% of wintry climates where there's snow uh, or ice it tends to be slippery and if you have a pair of these on it gives you an exceptional advantage over somebody who perhaps is uh, trying to attack you and you know doesn't have the sturdiness and grounding that you might with these traction devices and it can make all the difference to have that uh, ability to stand up without worrying about slipping and falling down. It can make a huge difference uh, to the point where, you know, a person of very minimal strength could uh, evade or potentially even uh, subdue somebody of a much larger stature. So something to consider. Uh, so here we have the snowshoes. Obviously, those are for, you know, snow. These snowshoes are designed for a lightly packed snow. So it's important to look <clears throat> when you do uh, buy snowshoes. And this is the only pair of snowshoes I have, I should add, or have ever had. It's a decent brand, but uh, one thing you want to look for is a lot of these fancy name brand. Uh, uh, and Tubbs is actually a decent brand, but uh, the very renowned names like MSR, uh, for instance, are more geared towards alpine environments where the snow is more densely packed. So even though they're a, a sturdier design that are probably going to last a lot longer than something plasticky like this, they're not really geared, they're not really large enough to provide significant amount of flotation on lightly packed snow. And that's going to make a huge difference if you're in the 200 pounds plus range, you're going to want a very large snowshoe there really is no getting around it if you're on lightly packed snow and you want to not sink uh, you need a fairly large snow snowshoe and in my experience go larger than the uh, they'll give you a weight range for each uh, snowshoe length and don't go up to the maximum <clears throat> within the 10 pound max of a snowshoe range if you're 200 pounds in a Snowshoe is rated to 200 pounds. Get the one that's one size higher, just in case you put on some more weight and then you got to factor in all the gear and the winter gear and potentially a backpack and stuff like that. And, you know, it's, it's going to actually make your mobility a lot easier. Most people think, well, you know, don't want to lug around a big snowshoe, but if you're sinking a foot and a half into the snow with each step, that's a lot of energy burned. Lot of energy expended so something to definitely consider Oops, sorry about that so you know make sure you talk to uh, the person uh, you're buying these from and make sure that you're getting the right kind of snowshoe now if you're not in a very if you're not really worried about snow if you're more so worried about traction there's different levels of traction you can get now the ones that i don't have here are called crampons and those are suited to 
you know, alpine environments, mountainous environments where you're doing very steep terrain. And you're going to want those properly fitted to a pair of crampon compatible boots. So that's something you'd have to look into, although I highly doubt anybody's going to be bugging out up a mountain. Unless you've got some secret stash up there or something like that. But uh, for everyday urban use, a cheap pair of $10 traction devices can uh, do you quite well. They're not really built to last. They're not very rugged. I've broken a couple of these, but they're definitely inconspicuous and they're... They don't make a lot of noise like some of the more aggressive traction devices will. Um, but they're, they they get the job done. I wouldn't really suggest running with them or doing anything which required an excessive amount of work. But for everyday use, uh, they're good because they don't, you know, poke up the floors. You can kind of go in from an inside environment to an outside environment without drawing too much attention to your feet or poking holes in people's floors and stuff like that. So, and they're relatively easy to put on for the most part. Uh, some older people struggle with having the strength to put them on, which is unfortunate because they're the ones who sort of need them most. So I usually recommend that you get a pair of shoes that has these built on at all times. So um, if you're somebody who, you know, just wants them for everyday use, you might want to designate a pair of shoes just for those or you could buy a shoe with cleats or something like that, but there's not a whole lot of options for that unless you go to a shoemaker and have it professionally done. There's the Yak Tracks. Uh, they make more rugged, ruggedized uh, forms of traction. There's a mosquito in here. Probably the last one. Right as I'm talking about winter. He's like, not yet, buddy. <sighs> Anyways. So it's a much more capable traction device. As you can see, there's six points of contact here. And uh, this can kind of dig into flooring. And, you know, you definitely don't want to wear it around the house or over to a friend's house or anything of that nature. But definitely built for running and more aggressive use outdoors. And also built for deep snow. They have this flap here that goes over your shoe. So your shoe would sit in here this flap would come over just in case you were you got your foot stuck in deep snow and when you pull it out the tendency is with these is that it will pull off under the weight of the snow as you're pulling your foot up to take a step these will stay on uh, they, they grip to your foot very nicely they're a little harder to apply but they're very rugged and it's a very good brand I would recommend it uh, very good for winter running and most of this stuff I don't use for you know, any sort of military purposes or anything like that. But I do use for recreational uses and general exercise type stuff. So uh, the most extreme, you know, that I found that's not a crampon is these Yak Tracks. And you can actually get, this is, these ones are pretty old, but you can get uh, newer ones that are a bit more intense. And they're basically like, you know, uh, tire chains for your feet. And they have these very deep, as you can see, these deep blades. So these things penetrate deep. You can pretty much, uh, you can pretty much sprint on black ice with these things. Like, uh, it's incredible the traction you get with these. And people will be amazed when you're walking up a, you know, 90 degree incline with, uh, with these things on, like it's, like it's no thing. That's probably an exaggeration, but you definitely could do a 45 degree incline, no problem, with these uh, Catula micro spikes. And that's, I believe it's K H A T O O L A, if you're interested in those. And very, very rugged rubber, you know, very stretchy, very tough, built to withstand temperatures of minus 40. The only problem with these is that they are loud. And that's one thing you'll find with the more rugged options. I've yet to find something that's not loud, but that has that traction capability. So you're going from quiet, less capable, uh, moderately loud, moderately capable to very loud, but very capable. And with these, actually, if you had these on your feet, they could be self-defense uh, 
if you knew how to use your feet, you could that could definitely hurt somebody if uh, they were coming at you or something like that. And I mean, if somebody was, you know, if you had a gang of people chasing you and you had these on and you were pretty quick on your feet, uh, there was no way they'd be able to, to catch you because they'd be slipping all over the place and you'd be dancing circles around them. So just some things to consider for winter footwear. I'm going to talk a bit more about winter gear as the as winter approaches here. And my next video is going to be about um, heating options for winter. Because if the grid ever were to go down in Canada, uh, the last thing you want to have to do is be corralled into some government-run facility and basically be at the whim of their rules and, you know, what they want you to do. So you want to definitely tackle the issue of heating. And we all can't move to Vancouver Island, as uh, one of my subscribers had once said. But we certainly can, uh, you know, well, I suppose we could, but if you have the money, but, you know, it's better to, uh, to try to prepare yourself at home. And there are cost-effective ways of doing that. So if you have any other things to add about winter footwear that perhaps I'm not aware of, uh, one other thing I do want to add is that um, you can make snowshoes with relative ease. Uh, there's a guy, uh, Far North Bushcraft and Survival, Lonnie from, from that channel will, he's got a video up on uh, how to make a pair of snowshoes and it's actually, I don't want to say easy, but it's, they're not really long lasting, but they're effective. They'll get the job done in an emergency situation and they'll, the difference they make is incredible. So something to consider. So this is just sort of part one of my winter gear series and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper